Welcome back to Unreal Tips and Tricks. In this second part, we are going to cover the light mask settings to finalize our visualization. We can already set our build quality to production. So if you go on the top in the build options menu and go to lighting quality and make sure to set that up to production. Production quality settings will use higher light samples, reducing noise and bleeding on the light maps. Before we start calculating our lighting, let's take a look at our light mass settings. To do so, go onto the Windows tab on the top left and enable World Settings. This is going to give me a tab on the right and if you look down here, you can expand your light mass settings. So these settings enable you more control on the light sampling and we are going to go ahead and tweak these values without diving into it too much but just enough so you have a basic understanding on how this can help reduce any remaining light bleeding. We're going to start by expanding our window for better visibility and go ahead with the static lighting level scale. This is used to decide how much detail to calculate in the lighting. Lower scales result in more light evaluation detail and higher build times. So we're going to use a value of 0.5 here. And as you can see in this illustration, we clearly see a better definition on our light calculation. Now this can introduce some noise to your scene. So we must compensate for this by changing our indirect lighting quality. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So here in my indirect lighting quality tab, I'm going to enter a value of two. And as you see in this illustration, it's a very good indicator on how both my static lighting scale and indirect lighting quality depend on each other. And as long as you keep the above multiplier a result of one, you will likely reduce artifacts in the scene. In this case, I am using 0.5 in the static lighting level scale, so I'm going to use a value of 2 in the indirect lighting quality. Now that that is correctly set up, we can jump back to our indirect lighting bounces. And essentially what this is, is the number of times the light is allowed to bounce off surfaces. A value between 5 to 10 is a good number since anything above that will not drastically change your lighting. So I'm going to keep soft here and do a value of 10. Let's move on to our skylighting bounces and essentially what this is, is how many times the indirect lighting from the skylight is bounced. So again, keeping our value between three to 10 is pretty good here. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 10 here. Last but not least, our indirect lighting smoothness. This will help you reduce the noise caused from the lower static scale value. And this is a very subtle setting since this only needs to be increased by a very slight bump. As you can see in this illustration, jumping from a value of 1.2 to 1.5 caused some lighting artifacts and bleeding edges, which is definitely not what we want to reproduce after all of this work. So I'm going to go ahead here and type a value of 1.2 to play it safe. With that done, we can build our lighting. Make sure to build on production settings. After a few hours of light baking, this is our final result and we can clearly see how well defined the shadows are and that our previous light leaking problems are now gone. A good tip to visualize your final lighting is to enable detail lighting mode in the view modes panel. This will give you a better idea of your overall lighting in the scene. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you very soon.